half on the second anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I struggled to finish this poem. I finally finished it last night, and uh, so this goes out to all of us because life is a struggle, and we don't give up. So this is the spirit of this is to, dedicated to the spirit of never giving up. So this one is called The Girl with the Crooked Mouth. A wide-eyed wanderer of a girl, older. A charming soldier of a boy, younger. A handshake impressed, a glance teased, a smile invited, a wave goodbye hooked. Hearts grew bolder and so began a love story, but this is no love story, no. This is a story of a girl who realized that the word sorry didn't mean anything when said one time too many. This is a story of a girl who realized that heartbreak was a physical pain, a pain that can scar and leave you slain. Four out of 4.9, that was the number of happy days, relatively happy days, where love grew so much that it had nicknames. It traveled and marveled. It got drunk and fell in the sand, laughing, sometimes hurting, but mostly smiling. It got passionate and fulfilling. Love grew wings and felt it could fly. But its seats never stayed in first class. Q 4.0, first class couldn't accommodate no more. The boy watched the girl as she spoke. With animated gestures and careless giggles, her bright eyes dreaming, her voice journeying, unaware of the impending words that were going to strike like lightning. The boy stared, parted his lips, and he interrupted. Do you know that your mouth is crooked? <laughs> Suddenly, the face of love turned into a question mark. The boy couldn't hear the sound of a heart breaking. The voice of love that used to sing lullabies had become a mere judgmental passerby. How did the eyes of love turn into those that sought out scrutiny magnified? She prodded and she pulled and she analyzed. Her vacant eyes glared at the motionless reflection, wanting answers. All it did was to stare straight at her and right through her. She was now the girl with the crooked mouth and she was not the norm. She wanted to disappear. If only she could whisk away like a rocketeer, but her spaceship had been built for two. The girl with the crooked mouth was already vanishing. She sat alone, gazing fixedly upon the V-Day colorings as the boy she loved fiddled with his food across from her. She cast new lines to reel him in, only to find she was already left behind as he wandered like a royal king among his subjects, seemingly on the prowl for a new queen. Still, the girl smiled, her crooked smile, interjecting patience, yearning for his attention. She peered at this tragic comedy like an orphan stuck outside, observing dinner time for a perfect family. The girl with the crooked mouth couldn't understand how the boy she loved remained by her side and yet never showed up in her life. The spaceship became rusty. Was he not supposed to have been the cosmic change in the universe? Did he not promise a future of stargazing? Was he not the Leo to her Capricorn? The girl had become dried leaves on the ground he walked on, the kind we never seem to mind, the ones we step on and push aside or discard after our leaf painting exercise. We'd only ever take notice when they decide to sweep up and brush across our faces. Still, all we do is quicken our paces. The girl held the boy's hand, but the spaces between their fingers seemed infinite, and the road from palm to heart no longer existed. She struggled to draw a bridge, but she could never find the right pen. The ink always dried up, or it stopped writing after two strokes. All she wanted to do was to write him to stay. There was a danger in her heart that she kept hidden from him, for if he knew, he'd call out on her weakness. There was a war in her mind, and she had no clue as to which side would be kind. The girl understood that she was no angel, but surely even crooked lines were precious too. After being thrown aside three times too many, it was time to cull the blues, sinking realization that what remained was only the shell of a person. 
This was not the woman she wanted to be, to have her being dictated by metaphor. She was not a mistake or an excuse or a fluke. She wanted to be the type of woman that would roar. She wanted her tales to be embedded for years to come in lore. Sometimes the first step to letting go really, sometimes the first step to holding on really is letting go. With the winter growing in her heart, she came to realize she did not belong. So off she went in search of her people, with a soul full of hope and a heart full of dreams. Perhaps the journey will deliver the coming of spring. This place existed. It called out to her, for her. Perhaps someday she will find the perfect pair of crooked hands that would hold her and tell her that the words from her crooked mouth were enough because they were true. And together they will steer her spaceship built for two.